Good evening, everybody. Welcome to First Church of Religious Science. Welcome to our weekly Louise Hay self-healing class. Welcome to all of you who are now signed in on Zoom and the few of you that are still trying to get in. Uh, we want to welcome all of you who are uh, here at the studio, as well as the people who will be watching us this afternoon, this evening on Facebook, Insta, Spotify, YouTube, X. Uh, so we're really glad that you're with us. So let's get into tonight's lesson on self-healing. Uh, and we're going to draw from the profound teachings, of course, of Louise Hay in the Principles of Religious Science. So we're going to explore, explore tonight the law, the law of mind, which is the cornerstone of religious science. It's the cornerstone of new thought. This law teaches that our thoughts create our experiences. You'll hear me say many weeks, thoughts are things, because the tendency of your thinking, the habituated thinking, is creating your life. Life, uh, as you think into it, the impress of your thoughts, uh, the universe acts upon them, and then you start to see demonstrations. Louise Hay's work exemplifies this law in action. Louise chose to say she uses the positive approach. So uh, we would say that uh, we, we, have, we have positive expectancy. It's the very same idea. So by using this positive approach, these positive affirmations, uh, what we're doing is we're cultivating a positive world. As we think of ourselves positively, we're cultivating self-love. When we align our thoughts and our thinking with the creative power of the universe, when we when, see we have to align ourselves with ideas like peace, power, love, joy, beauty, and wisdom. When we do this, when we align our thoughts with source, with the creative power of the universe, we begin to heal our lives thought by thought, and we begin to transform everything. Louise often said, the point of power is always in the present moment. This is a very profound truth, and it reminds us that we have the ability to shape our reality at any given time. And it doesn't matter if you've been doing it, if you've been messing up in some way for days, hours, weeks, months, you have the point, the point of power is always in the present moment. We have the ability to shape our reality at any given moment. Uh, so you, you can start your day over right now, this evening, or whenever you're listening to this tape, you can say, I've had enough. <laughs> um, <clears throat> starting here, starting now, I intend to do it a different way. Through conscious thinking and affirmations, we can begin to direct our energy towards creating a life that we desire. Ernest Holmes was teaching, uh, no, we were, we in our science of mind um, groups were teaching religious science to the kids and we teach them that there's a stagecoach which represents your, your comfort zone. So you get in your stagecoach, that's your comfort zone. And in front of the stagecoach, of course, is a, a team of wild stallions and when Ernest Holmes was saying there's power for good in the universe and you can use it, what he's doing is he's saying, get out of your comfort zones and get up on that platform and take the reins and direct that power. The fact of the matter is you can direct the power, but if you stay in your comfort zone with your same old thinking and your same old uh, ideas, prejudices, resentments, you know, if that's where you're at, that's going to be driving the bus, or in this case, the stagecoach. It, and you'll drive yourself, you'll crash and burn with, with that. So we want to use our um, executive power, is what Ernest Holmes spoke of. You have the ability to decide, you have the ability to choose. We're, we always have free choice, and it's always up to us. So through conscious thinking and using affirmations, you're going to be building up your consciousness uh, and you're going to be able to direct that energy towards creating a life uh, that represents your desires. So you might think about a time in your life 
when you had a shift in your thinking, it could be maybe you've been coming to these classes or where you've had a moment where you've said, I've had it. <laughs> a, a time where you had a significant shift, a positive one, right? Um, where you realized I deserve more. Maybe you got out of a relationship when you finally realized you deserve something better. <clears throat> Or maybe it could have been a job, it could have been anything, but at some point in your life where you had a significant positive change, think about that moment when you had that shift and you had a positive change in your thinking. You might have been facing a difficult situation and by focusing on the positive, where you wanted to be when you got out of it, <laughs> you found a solution that um, exceeded your expectations. So that's oftentimes the way it works. In religious science, love is seen as the self-givingness of spirit. You'll see that in the textbook. Uh, love is seen as the self-givingness of spirit. Spirit is always giving to us. It's always wooing us. It's always attempting to get, get our attention. Ernest Holmes describes it as the force that binds all creation together. Um, it's good for us to understand that we are one with this energy. And as we think of this divine energy that's in us and operating through us, it's good then to let our mind and our consciousness expand and realize that this one energy that's in us, operating through us and around us, it's, it operates outside of us and we're connected with it in other people. And everyone is a center of this what we'll call God activity or divine activity. So when we say, or Louise Hay would say, deep at the center of my being, there is an infinite well of love radiating out from me in all directions. You can let yourself then imagine that that source energy, which is in you, goes out from you and it connects with the person next to you. As you look at the call tonight, this energy connects with everyone that's here and everyone that's in the sound of my voice. This energy is in all things, all people, everywhere, regardless of their religion, regardless of their country. Um, all of us are one with this energy. Uh, we sometimes say it's a presence that's never an absence. So wherever you can imagine the furthest most place to the deepest part of your being, there is that something. That something that we really can't describe. What Holmes calls the thing itself. Um, you're a part of it. You are an individualization of it. You're one with it. It is something you can tap into. And as you do, you'll have answers to every question you need <laughs> deep in the center of your being. As Louise said, there is this infinite well of love, creative intelligence, and everything that you need, you already have within. Louise would say by loving ourselves, by, be by being committed to the process of loving ourselves more and more each day, we tap into this divine force and we allow it to come forth and we allow it to flow through us. We partner with it. My dad used to say to me, spirit will not be the uninvited guest. So even though you're a part of it and it's all around you, you want to invite the awareness of this activity, this spiritual activity into your awareness and allow it to do what it needs to do. It will inform you. It will help you in your choosing. Uh, it will help you making healthier choices. It will manifest itself as health, prosperity, greater happiness. We live in this divine energy, as I've said a couple of times already, we move in it, we have our being in it. Uh, it doesn't get much better than that. When I was younger, I was always praying to a God above, and it was generally a, a male figure. <laughs> and I was praying for a lot of things, and I would say, I'll do this and I'll do that, if only, <laughs> you know, you help me in these ways. And I encountered a good religious science practitioner. I've told the story many times. Uh, her name was Mary <coughs> Jurowitz. And she said, Greg, you were the child of a lesser God. You, you were taught to have prayed to a God that sometimes answered and sometimes did not. And sometimes you just waited. And she said, 
I want you to know in this teaching in religious science that you'll come to understand that the universe so completely loves you that it responds to every single thought. It never misses a single one. So that's really the good news of this teaching, and it's the truth. It's the truth of metaphysics, that you live in it, this essence, this divine energy, you move in it, you're a part of it, you can always turn within, and turn to it, and there's like a restoration. <laughs> because oftentimes in our day-to-day -day living, we forget. That's a problem that Louise Hay spoke of in one of the songs that were associated with her work. And the lyric was remembering. When you're remembering, everything is wonderful, right? Remembering and forgetting. It's the game that we play. So as human beings, we forget. And then we react to people, places, and things, and we get ourselves out of shape. And we forget that we are one with this divinity, and that we have power available to us that we can't even comprehend. And when we wake, that's when we remember, and then, we re then there's a restoration. Um, that's one of the greatest arguments for staying tuned in with our classes week by week, because we're always going to be reminding you of your connection with Source. We're always going to re be reminding you that you are whole, you're complete, you are an individualization of God life, you're intelligent, you have great value, um, that you're one in a billion. In fact, it's, there's never been another one like you. So when you get involved in self-esteem work and uh, the inner work and transformational work, uh, you begin to lose interest in some of the worldly things that used to get your attention. Uh, you level up. It doesn't mean you're um, unaware of the things that are going on in the world, but you understand that there is a divine unfolding that's happening in life everywhere. It's happening in each of us. It's happening in the world. Now, a lot of people will get snared in the things that are happening in the world, what's wrong and what's missing, and you know, and you can do that if you want to. But most people who get really involved in metaphysical study and spiritual study come to some conclusions rather quickly, meaning they can't change the entire world, but they certainly can change themselves. You can learn that I can see peace, joy, happiness, instead of whatever it is that I've been obsessed, obsessing over. I don't need to be attached to people, places, and things. I can trust the process of life that Louise Hay so beautifully stated so many times. So here's an example. I have a couple for you. Imagine a person who struggles with chronic illness. Right? It's an illness that just doesn't ever seem to go away. And they come into the teaching, and by practicing self-love and self-acceptance, this person begins to treat their body with kindness. They begin to talk about the health that they do have. And they begin making healthier choices, illustrating that they haven't given up on themselves. Despite a chronic illness, they begin making healthier choices little bit by little bit. And they start speaking words of love, and they start speaking ideas, thoughts of affirmation. They are inclined to say thank you more often, and they become a little bit more kind. Over time, they notice improvements in their health and their overall well-being. This would be an example of self-love in action. It's just taking that positive approach that Louise Hay talks about. Uh, instead of having a negative story about a chronic illness, they begin to practice uh, a different kind, of, like an unconditional self-love, a decision to be kind to, to themselves, uh, greater interest in how they treat their body, uh, and that can show up maybe with a demand for a different kind of food or making healthier choices and speaking words up to themselves rather than what's wrong with them. They will turn that dialogue around to words of love and affirmation and gratitude. A little bit more about affirmations. 
because I know many of you use them. A lot of you have your own favorites. Um, <clears throat> I think most of you know some of mine. I habitually will say, this is God in my life, whatever it is. Um, I will also say, I am supplied and supported. I will say that many times in most days. Um, I have lots of them, and I'm sure you do too. Perfect place, perfect time, all the time. Um, everything's in divine order. Uh, there's a lot of them. Um, I'm successful. I love myself the way I am. So I'd like you to think of the affirmations that you say to yourself, that you use, your favorites. Um, and I'd like you to think about how your affirmations, the ones you've been using in recent times, have influenced you. Maybe they've brought about some changes in your life. So we can talk about that in a few minutes when we come to pers our personal sharing. Have you noticed any shifts uh, or any changes? I remember when I was saying, this is God in my life all the time. It's, it's many decades ago. Um, I would start to smile because I, would start, I was practicing God realization. So I was beginning to see that God was in everything. Today, I don't use the word God so much, but I, the idea is still the same, that this is spirit. This is divine activity. <laughs> There's not a spot where God is not. So that particular affirmation brought forth a lot of uh, shifts, shifts in my awareness. Um, there were others. Um, the holiest spot on earth is where an ancient grievance is, is healed. Uh, that was poetic, but it was always... It was always showing me uh, the folly of holding a grievance and the pain that I keep for myself. So, you know, that comes from uh, a different book. And uh, the title of a book was Love Holds No Grievances. So a lot of these affirmations can cause a shift or a shift in yourself. Uh, Louise Hay, when she said the bottom line for everyone is they don't feel good enough about themselves. That was very, very profound when I first heard that because she distilled from all the various types of complaints that people would have is um, uh, the underlying idea that people just didn't feel adequate or that good enough. And so there was this critical thing that was going on uh, that she was encouraging people to let go of. So the question here is, Whatever affirmation that you use or you used to use um, or the ones you've been using in recent times, how is it working out? <laughs> how has it been influencing your daily life? Uh, have you noticed any shifts or any changes? So when it comes time for sharing, uh, put your hand up and share how your affirmations or your affirmative prayer work is working. Um, or, you know, why you think. I, I know if, you know, if you keep thinking of yourself as a successful person, you're going to draw success into your life. If you keep on thinking, you know, I was reminded always when I was a kid of Benjamin Franklin's uh, Poor Richard's Almanac, which was assume a virtue if you have it not. So if you work with these affirmations and you start to believe in what you're saying, assuming they're in alignment with, you know, truth, uh, they become very, very powerful. So uh, there's an opportunity for us in a few minutes for you to share the affirmation, the one, two, the three that you like, and, and how you see it um, changing your life, perhaps because you're involved in this affirmative practice. For instance, there was a member who mentioned that um, they used the affirmation, I'm completely open to new opportunities. And she was saying it all the time. <laughs> and as a result, she found herself in a more, she found herself more receptive to change. And it ultimately led her to a much, much better job, a job that she never thought she was worthy of before. Many of us hold on to limiting beliefs that hinder our growth and our healing. You know, I don't know why we do it, we do it. We usually acquired them when we were quite young and we think we've done a lot of work, and we have done a lot of work, but there's still things that we hang on to. Uh, so this is a day where, as you can do a brain scan, if anything pops up, you can say, I release the need for you. <laughs> um, 
You want to neutralize the belief. You want to know what it's there for, what it's there to teach you, and you want to turn it around. Uh, so many hold on to limiting beliefs, resentments, and all that uh, that definitely hinder growth and healing. Louise Hay taught that by identifying these, these items and transforming them, we can create more empowering beliefs. So consider a belief that you've been holding on to. It might sound something like I've got a couple listed. I'm not good enough. I can't do this. I'm not good in relationships. Another one would be I don't deserve happiness. I don't deserve success. I'm not smart enough. I can't do it. Uh, maybe you've just really downing yourself because of things you've done in the past and you just know that you're not lovable and you tell yourself that you're not lovable. And there's people who do this, you know, and um, I'm here to tell you you don't have to, but you know, this is, people do this. Another would be, I don't deserve happiness. I've not been a good person. I don't deserve to be happy. I deserve whatever, to be punished or otherwise. Um, if anybody's having any of these types of thoughts or thinking, I invite you to consider letting them go one by one and replacing these ideas because you do deserve to be happy. You do deserve to be successful. Each and every one of you on this call are more than enough. Each of you are individualizations of God's life. You may not realize it as of yet, but you deserve the world. Um, another uh, habitual belief, negative belief. I don't deserve happiness. I'm incapable of achieving these goals. I, I don't have what it takes. Or I'm not safe in this world, the way I think, the way I act. Or maybe one that's even a little bit more sad is I don't belong. I don't belong here. I don't belong. Um, and another one that we hear often it's too late for me. It's too, I'm too old. I'm too old to change. So these are all a bunch of limiting beliefs, and I would encourage anybody to challenge all of them, one by one. Except I would encourage you, now that I'm a bit older myself, I would encourage you to challenge them uh, lovingly, but still emphatically change them. Challenge them, because they're not true. It's a bunch of nonsense. Um, so you, you're good enough. You deserve to be successful. You are lovable. You deserve great happiness. Uh, you're an inlet and outlet of God activity, and you're here to thrive, and you're here to expand and to grow. And so when, wherever and however that stuff comes into your consciousness, stop in the name of love and just say, no, no, no. <laughs> I release the need for this stuff, and I'm going to replace this with loving thoughts, positive affirmations. Uh, so part of this exercise I'm supposed to ask, uh, consider any belief that's been holding you back, anything, and, and say to yourself, I have the willingness to let this go. Could be something going on with a person. You could just be caught up in this whole thing where there's a resentment that you've been nurturing or anything like that. Uh, consider anything that's been holding you back and have the willingness to let it go. Could be something like, I'm not good enough, or I don't deserve success. Uh, whatever it is, you know, how's that been working out for you? So I'm asking you just to think about it and have the willingness. There's a 12-step program. They don't even in that step they don't even say you have to do anything. They just say, pray for the willingness to let it go. The first thing is, of course, to be aware that you're doing it. So do a little scan within yourself, and you know what the things are. Uh, I was taught in religious science years ago that you know and you, you know that you know. So if there's something awry or there's something not adding up or something that's not the way you realize it ought to be, uh, let's just have the willingness to take a look and uh, let it be your intention to begin to neutralize and let it go. Louise Hay often said, the only thing we're ever dealing with, by the way, is a thought. So you think you're dealing with people, you think you're dealing with terrible circumstances or whatever. And Louise would say, the only thing you're ever dealing with is a thought. And she said, a thought can always be changed. 
So if you've got something going about some person, place, or thing where you're energized and it causes your blood pressure to rise or you get red in the face or ang angry, the first thing to realize is it's your problem. <laughs> I had to spend a lot of money on a therapist to learn that one. I've shared that before. The therapist would always give me a card that would say, whose problem is this? <laughs> so when you're all bent out of shape about what other people are doing, whose problem is it? It's our problem. Uh, I'm gonna explore a couple other common limiting beliefs since this is the lesson. Uh, the idea that I'm not lovable. Um, many people hang on to that one, uh, that they're unworthy in one way or another of affection. Um, they just have a lot of guilt over things. This belief can stem from past experiences with other people, relationships that didn't go well, or messages that you get from society that uh, will make you feel inadequate. Recognizing this belief that I'm, I'm not lovable uh, is a mistake, uh, representing that it's not a new thought idea. We want, we want to replace it with something like, I'm worthy of love and I attract loving, supportive people in my life. That can be just, a, that's a, such a transformative thing. Once you realize if you've got this negative picture of yourself as unlovable, you can turn that around by working with the idea that I'm worthy of love and I attract loving, supportive people into my world. Uh, that requires some effort because if you've got this whole inner thing that you're not worthy, uh, it'll take some time to turn that around. But there's nobody nicer to be nicer to than you and you're worth the work. Uh, similarly, if you say, I don't deserve happiness, there's a lot of individuals that feel happiness is not meant for them. Perhaps they've lived a very tough life and they have a lot of guilt over things that have happened in the past. So we need to work with those things if we have them. You could shift if you've been chronically unhappy, you could say something like, and you really have to get yourself to a point of belief, I deserve to be happy, I deserve to enjoy my life. If you're able to do that and start to mean it and connect with it, it helps to open the door to joy and fulfillment. Uh, for those of you who feel it's too late or I'm incapable of achieving my goals, uh, this belief oftentimes comes from a fear, fear of failure or having very little confidence and you can replace that with, I, mean, I am capable <laughs> and I have all the resources I need within me. So if you're fearful, of, you're fearing failure and you're lacking the ability to start, then start working and building up your consciousness around the idea of your own capabilities and knowing that you are supplied and supported. And if you're one of these people who do not feel safe going out your own door, you don't feel safe in the world, and that's a common one that we hear, this belief can result from, we've been through COVID together, we've gone, there's a heightened sense of vulnerability, uh, there's been a lot of anxiety and fear. Uh, you can work with an idea like this by repeating and beginning to get yourself to a point of belief that I'm safe, I'm protected, I'm peaceful. I'm safe, I'm protected, I'm full of peace. These types of words, these types of affirmations can cause you to uh, secure a sense of security and inner calm. And for anyone who doesn't feel like they belong here, or they don't belong somewhere, they don't belong in their own family, they don't belong, uh, this kind of belief makes a person feel isolated and disconnected from society. It's as though they don't feel adequate to be a part of society. Uh, it's really important to heal this and change it to, I am a valuable and val valued part of this community. I'm a valued um, an integral part of the world. Or you could say, I am one with this one. I am an individualization of God life. I am, in, I am one with the one. But you really want to work with that. Because these beliefs, if you really... See, I'm thinking a lot of people in this call don't relate to this so much anymore because most of you have uh, worked with yourselves. But many people do have these beliefs. And these beliefs at their core uh, reflect deep issues of self-rejection. 
uh, beneath all the stories that we tell ourselves of being wonderful and all of that, the bottom line is many people still struggle with accepting and loving who they are. That's the reason Louise Hay's book was so extremely successful. She hit a core. People don't feel good about who they are and what they are. And so we want to learn to love, accept, and approve of ourselves so we can begin to heal and embrace ourselves as magnificent spiritual beings. Instead of focusing on new affirmations, maybe we should, I'll use the word should. Instead of focusing on new affirmations, uh, I'll encourage you to reaffirm and recommit to the ones you've already uh, chosen. Reflect on the progress you've made and the areas where you can strengthen your practice. Just keep it up. Keep reinforcing your positive beliefs and you're going to see more and more demonstrations. Um, it was Reverend Ike who used to say, you just can't lose with the stuff we use. And that's true if you keep applying it, if you keep staying the course. For example, it's been a while now that I remember someone replacing, I can't do this with, I'm capable of handling anything <laughs> from this teaching. And as, as I remember, there was a big improvement in their confidence and their productivity. In religious science, we believe in the principle of abundance. Louise Hay taught us methods to shift from scarcity to prosperity in our consciousness. We want to keep on focusing on abundance and using affirmations. Uh, and as we do, we will attract prosperity in all areas of our life. She reminded us that the universe loves grateful people. The more grateful you can make yourself, the more grateful you are, the more you get to be grateful about. So this means that gratitude and abundance go hand in hand. So we'll do a little visual exercise to attract abundance before we turn it over to you all. So let's close our eyes and take a deep breath. Imagine your life filled with abundance. See yourself living in prosperity, whatever that means to you, with everything you need. All your needs are met. Sense what this feels like. Feel the joy and the gratitude of this reality. Repeat silently to yourself, I'm a magnet for abundance. Prosperity flows to me in unexpected and miraculous ways. I'm a magnet for abundance. Prosperity flows to me in unexpected and miraculous ways. Feel the truth of these words resonating within you. Visualize for a moment your abundant life with as much detail as possible. Feel it, sense it. Allow yourself to feel the emotions of joy and gratitude as if it's already there. Okay, so let's bring it back. One participant, the last time we did this, visualized receiving unexpected financial support and soon after received a significant raise at work, affirming the power of this practice. Forgiveness is a powerful tool for healing as well. Both religious science and Louise Hay teach that forgiving ourselves and others releases us from the past and opens up the door to everything good. Forgiveness is for you because it frees you. It lets you out of prison. It lets you out of the prison you put yourself in. Forgiveness is not about condoning harmful behavior, but about freeing yourself from the emotional burden of resentment. So take a deep breath again. Visualize anyone you need to forgive, yourself included. Imagine a light of love and forgiveness surrounding this person and say it to say to them or to yourself, I forgive you, I release you, I am free. And as you repeat these words, imagine the light of forgiveness growing brighter and warmer. Feel the weight of any resentment lifting from your shoulders. Allow yourself to be free from the past, opening yourself up to the future with peace and joy. So I want to welcome anybody who's new on the call. Please say hello where you're from. There's time for everybody uh, to share for a couple of minutes. Thank you for joining with us this evening. We look forward to hearing from you. Uh, in just, just a moment. Thank you.